coffee is one of the most important cash crops in Kenya. It is grown in both large-scale and small-scale plantations, giving a total production of about 50,000 tons annually. The main variety in Kenya is Arabica coffee grown on rich volcanic soil found in the highland regions. Statistics show that over 250,000 Kenyans are employed in the production of coffee. Kenya's coffee is known for its wonderful sweetness and a dry, winey aftertaste. Some of the world's finest coffees come from Kenya. Despite being a heavy producer of coffee, research shows that the domestic coffee consumption in Kenya is very low. According to the survey done by the uh, Coffee Directorate, the consumption stands at roughly uh, 3% in terms of national consumption. And uh, uh, generally, uh, that does not compare well. If you look at countries like Ethiopia or other coffee producing countries, so there is a growing trend in terms of improved coffee, domestic coffee consumption, but there's still more work that needs to be done. The Denkimathi University of Technology Farm devotes 302 acres of land to coffee production endowed with 175,000 coffee trees. The seedling varieties grown at the University Coffee Nursery include SL28, SL34, Ruru11, Ruru11 Grafted, Batian and K7. Coffee production at the farm starts with propagation at the nursery bed where the coffee seeds are incubated for 45 days to allow for germination. Thereafter, they are transferred into potting bags for a period of six months during which grafting is undertaken. The university farm grafts a cell 28 which acts as the rootstock and Riru 11 as the scion to improve the quality of the coffee grown. We put the grafted one, copropagata, tunafunikia kwa kwa njoto yake tunaitimia kwa njoto for 45 days naanza kushika ikianza kushika tunaipia another 2 weeks that is 14 to to be transfer kulingana na immunity coffee seedlings are planted in a 3 by 3 feet hole they thrive in well aerated soil with an annual rainfall of 100 milliliters to 150 milliliters and temperatures of 15 to 30 degrees Celsius. Once the coffee plant starts flowering at 18 months, fertilization takes place and the coffee trees produce green berries. The green berries eventually ripen to red berries which are ready for harvesting. In terms of production, we started with a low of around 28 tons. This is clean coffee, the processed coffee after parchment removal and after milling, 28 tons. And we have been progressively going up once. Last year was our best year where we, we realized around 86 tons of green coffee. And we are projecting in the next two to three years, uh, we are projecting we'll be able to be harvesting around 150 tons. Probably the, the ultimate yield production at some point, I'm estimating you might be able to do around 250 tons, which will be very good for us. Coffee farming is a livelihood provided to over 25 million families around the world. So, what is the contribution of coffee farming in Dikut to the university and the community? This farm has really, it has played a multiple roles. Let me say a multiplication of roles. Uh, first of all, we support currently around 120 employees on a daily basis. All these are mainly pulled from the community, around the community. These are people who work in various sections, managing coffee, maybe dairy weeding. In addition, during some key stages, when we carry out some special management practices, for example, pruning, we require more labor. Just two months ago, we completed, one month ago, we have completed the first major pruning where we are engaging on a daily basis an extra 70 people. That is in addition to 120. And this one we did for a whole month. The other practices like harvesting, which is quite labor intensive. During harvesting, we can have as many as 400 people per day. And these are people we normally support by payment 
Our payment is normally by cash when we are doing these short activities. So basically for the community, I would say it has contributed to social cohesion. Because you can imagine all these people, they would have nothing. They would not have any other source of income or it's not this for this coffee. So basically this is a farm which has contributed holistically to the community around and to the institution. After the coffee berries have been harvested, they are processed using the wet processing method. In this method, the harvested beans are poured into a trough of cold water for softening at a moisture content of 60%. The beans are thereafter mechanically depulped using a pulper. Next, the coffee beans are placed in a fermentation tank to remove the mucilage after which they are washed using running water. During the washing process, the beans are sorted into different grades depending on their density. And during washing, we grind it. So we have different uh, parchment ingredients. The one you see that it is very clear and the appealing to your eyes, that is the parchment one. It is followed by parchment two. We have lights and P3. And even when we do further grading here or we do sorting, uh, if you sort in beans, which is, uh, for example, this is a P1, there are some beans which, which you can see that there are some defects. We have to pick them so that we maintain that P2, P1 P is uh, being very clean. Then you put, give this one another ingredient, but mostly we put them to the P3s. There are so many stages of uh, coffee, coffee and drying, but they should take mostly seven days when the weather is conducive. And when the weather is not favorable, it may take even even 14 days to dry up to 11. After sorting, the parchments are placed on drying beds to reduce the moisture to the desired levels of 11%, which is the level recommended for storage and further processing. The University Coffee Processing and Value Addition is conducted in the University's Institute of Food, Bioresources, Technology. Coffee Technology Center was established in 2013 to drive the agenda of conducting research in matters related to coffee. Since then, we've been able to carry out various activities that has led to establishment of the Coffee Cupping Laboratory. Some of the activities we've done is to promote uh, better quality coffee, higher yields of production through collaboration with the farmers who are able to utilize our laboratory uh, through the cupping quality analysis we don't only do the analysis, but also we've been able to empower over 10 coffee cooperative societies on the best practices. We get the advice from the laboratory results towards better improvement of coffee, better production of coffee through the coffee uh, cupping laboratory. Our research has been focused on three areas, the first being improved quality and yield of coffee, and the second one being uh, value addition of coffee into various products that can attract uh, better revenue. And then the third aspect has been matters of green production on environmental conservation. In the first aspect, we've been very keen on uh, choice of better varieties in terms of nursery production of seedlings, which we distribute to farmers at affordable prices, better uh, fermentation techniques, better drying techniques, and even better soil management techniques. In terms of um, environmental conservation, we've been very keen on uh, using equipment that uh, use less water. For example, uh, we've done research on the use of ecopulper that ensures that we're able to conserve water, but at the same time achieve better quality of coffee. Thirdly, in terms of value addition, we've been able to innovate new products, and two of the products that we currently have uh, the coffee flavored yogurt and the coffee liquor which we've been able to partner with uh, Mukroini Dairies whom we have a license agreement through the patent which we have on those various products and one of the reasons why we ventured on this was basically to initiate the university industry partnership so that we are able to upscale the innovation that we had in terms of the coffee flavored yogurt. And this we've seen that has, a, has had a lot of impact in the community, particularly in the dairy farmers who are now able to sell more of the product from that particular company. But also as a university, we're able to create more solutions to, to the industry.
My name is uh, Choga Kinudia and I'm a coffee technologist. I work in the Institute of Food and Resources Technology. Mostly I'm based in the coffee technology uh, or in the coffee cupping laboratory or coffee cupping center. My main responsibility is mostly to offer practicals in the coffee technology lab and more so also to cup coffees that are brought by farmers. Above that, we also do what we call coffee tourism. The processes that are undertaken at the coffee testing center, uh, one, uh, we normally receive coffee samples from the farmers and once we receive the coffee sample, the first thing we need to know is whether that coffee has been dried well. And how we do that, we check the moisture content of that particular coffee and the recommended moisture content of the coffee is between 9 and 11 percent. After you get to know the moisture content of the coffee, the next thing we need to do is to determine the weight of the coffee that has been brought to us. After you know the weight of the coffee, uh, then the next thing, we divide the sample by two, and then the one, ha one half we hull it, and after hulling it, we are able to know, to, de to get the weight of the cream coffee, and more so we determine the milling loss, or the amount of husks that that particular coffee has lost. So after we, get, we determine the milling loss, then the next thing is the hulled coffee, we divide it into different grades and uh, the six grades that we normally determine there are grade A, grade AA, grade AB, grade PB, grade C and then we have grade T and then uh, we're able to determine the percentages of each and every grade then from there uh, we determine the green characteristic of uh, grade AB we're able to know the characteristic of the green coffee then we roast a sample of grade AB. That sample that we roast, we normally give it eight hours uh, so that it can be in a position to degas. After degassing the, the coffee for eight hours, then we weigh 12 grams of that particular coffee in a cup of 200 ml. Then we grind it uh, using a coffee grinder. Mostly we normally do what we call medium ground coffee. And then after we grind, uh, the next thing we do is to assess the aroma of the coffee. From the aroma, we're able to tell the quality of the coffee. Then we infuse it in water. Infusion normally takes three to five minutes. And after infusion, uh, we test uh, the coffee. From the testing, you're able to get uh, notes and then you're able to uh, generally get the quality of the coffee. And then uh, once we assess the quality of the coffee, uh, we are able to do a report uh, to the farmers. The reports mostly basically involves assessment of the coffee from the hulling and then the grading report, the green characteristic, uh, the roasted characteristics and finally uh, the cupping report. This is what we normally give to the farmers and then they are able to appreciate uh, the quality of their coffee. As, as a parting shot is to tell people to be passionate and uh, to drink coffee and uh, mostly drink Kenyan coffee and it, it tastes good. And uh, I will really uh, appreciate that uh, even as you're tasting the Kenyan coffee, we have uh, uh, the Kut Premium Coffee. It's a blend of what uh, we were able to uh, ens ensure that we're able to have good quality. The training programs offered in coffee at the Kut are basically two. Uh, we have uh, the diploma in coffee technology and cupping. Uh, we also have certificate in coffee technology and quality management and then we have various types of short courses. One of the reasons why we decided to have these courses was basically um, to empower the professionals in the coffee sector to attain the necessary skills and knowledge so that they're able to perform the best competency possible. For a long time the coffee sector has been um, largely having informal kind of human resource and one of our gaps that we wanted to fill was basically to uh, produce professionals in the coffee sector be able to perform to the best capability hence uh, a better income for the farmers. Uh, secondly, um, there has been a lot of interest in the youth and the women participating in the coffee sector and one of the a uh, potential intervention we had was to train the youth and the women through these particular programs 
so that eventually they will gain employment within the coffee sector or they will get self-employed and therefore uh, we have equitable um, participation of everyone within the coffee sector. Like any other type of farming, coffee farming faces some challenges. So, what is the main challenge facing coffee farming in Kenya? There is the issue of climate change, which is now really impacting heavily on us. Uh, for the last two years, we have not received sufficient rain for a year. And actually recently, things are getting worse. The distribution is very poor. And further, this climate change has also impacted the margins of diseases and pests. For this particular region, Nyeri region, never used to have problems of coffee berry disease. Coffee berry disease was a disease associated with lowlands, low altitude areas. But right now, this is a disease which is becoming very difficult to manage in coffee, very expensive. Kenyan coffee remains one of the best coffee in the world. And uh, as Dedan Kimathi University, we take pride to be uh, globally recognized as uh, a university that produces coffee and adds value to the same coffee. So for me what I can say, coffee has a bright future, both for the farmer, for the consumer and for the seller.